Hey everyone, welcome back to Impossibly Kosher. Today I'm gonna to be unboxing, setting up, doing the initial burn-in and the seasoning of the incredible Yoder Smoker YS640S. All right, so stick around, let's get to it. Today is a special day. Well, for me at least. Today I received my Yoder Smokers YS640S. Now, if you don't know Yoder Smokers, honestly, you're missing out. You for sure heard of Traeger and GMG and uh, Oklahoma Joe's, but Yoder is where it's at. Yoder Smokers is not just your typical company making pellet grills. They're an American company that makes grills and smokers that are not the ordinary type that you're gonna find at your department store. Everything they design and make is made in Kansas, USA. So, American made, high quality product. They're designed for competition setting, all the way to a normal backyard barbecue, grill master, pit master, whatever you wanna call it. And they make heavy duty pieces of machinery. When I say heavy duty, I mean heavy duty. Like I'm talking the smallest one that they have is like 255 pounds, all the way up to 1200 pounds. 1200 pounds, not including the trailer. So that's massive heavy duty things. The 640S is very similar to uh, the, you know, the 480S. The main difference between the two is really the cooking, uh, the amount of space that you have, the cooking area, but it's a 10 gauge steel. So it is a really intense unit and their technology on their grills is unique. They've developed their own software that monitors the grill, that monitors the temperatures. And I think it's several times a second that it's taking track and using a moving average, if I'm not mistaken. Nonetheless, it's a unique system that they've developed for their uh, pellet grills. Now, as I go in detail, you'll understand how this is not your traditional pellet cooker, that this is a lifetime cooker. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, what is a pellet grill? Pellet cooker consists of a few parts. The cooking chamber, where basically all the meat goes and everything is being cooked. In the cooking chamber, there is a, a, an igniter, a firebox. Now on the Yoder smoker, it's on the YS640S, it's actually on the side here. A lot of other brands will either have it in the center, but this one's off to the left next to the pellet hopper. The pellet hopper is where all your pellets are stored and it's fed from the hopper into the firebox and with the help of an auger, that takes it from the pellet hopper into the firebox. Uh, it's dropped down there. And then there is a ceramic igniter, which starts the whole process off. You wanna make sure to always have food grade pellets. This is your average food pellet that you'll find and make sure that they're good quality ones. Now here, there's a combustion fan, which basically blows air into the firebox, which allows either for a, you know, a better circulation of air while feeding air into the actual fire. Finally, the electronic control system. This is basically what tells the auger to turn, the ceramic um, igniter to ignite, when to stop, how to do the cool down, monitors the temperature, everything. And it uses the little thermometer probe that's right here that detects and monitors the temperature in the actual cooker. So that's the basics of a pellet grill. Now let's talk about the YS640S. Keep in mind that this may not look the same as a model that you've seen more mainstream, either on YouTube or on the internet. This is the competition model. That means that I have stainless steel shelves and I have this beautiful competition cart. On the inside, between the two layers, you got about 1,070 square inches of cooking space and a 20 pound capacity pellet hopper. This baby is designed to handle heats from as low as 150 all the way to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now keep in mind that once it's actually at 600 degrees, direct grilling gets way, way hotter. It's closer to 700, 800 degrees. So you got from smoking to direct grilling, no problems. Like I mentioned, built with a 10 gauge steel, the YS640S weighs in at a whopping 418 pounds. So when you're setting this up, you don't want to do it alone. Trust me, you're going to want some help, at least one or two guys uh, that have a good amount of muscle. The Yoders come with a counterweight that's actually super fashionable, looks really nice, uh, a cool handle, and when you lift it, it really acts as a counterweight so that the, the lid stays intact, doesn't move too much, which is very, very nice. Like I mentioned, the stay cool handles, there is a probe port right here, which opens up and closes, connects to, you have two ports for internal temperatures, you know, uh, when you're doing a cook. Underneath here, you have your variable displacement damper. This is what's gonna be pushing the heat from one side to the other. And Yoder has different recommendations on, depending what you're cooking, how to, how to actually place them. But your standard should be 
five inches in and about nine and a half inches out. The grease trap and grease drain are all found on the right side of the unit. They drain down into a little bucket that's on the side here that you can easily take out and wash out. Now Yoder's adaptive control system or ACS, which they built, like I mentioned, in my opinion, it's one of the best in the market. And it's really great at controlling the temp in the actual cooker. And they partnered with Fireboard, which is one of the leading labs in regards to uh, temperature uh, and cooking. You download the Fireboard app, you connect it to your YS640S, uh, and then it basically allows it to connect to Wi-Fi, to Bluetooth, so you can monitor it all over the house, wherever you are. A uh, nice little feature in the Fireboard app is that you can actually shut down the unit directly, which is really, really cool, and I'll show you guys in another video. Food probes that come with the unit. You got the diffuser plate. That's actually a two-part diffuser plate. has a ceramic igniter. And the competition model with the cart has eight inch flat tires. So this is really, really nice when you're moving it around. I live in a cold climate. The winters are pretty intense. So this is gonna come in very, very handy. Now, when it comes, it comes on a truck, on a pallet. The delivery guy had to wheel it into my garage for me, which was really, really helpful. Now, when it comes out of the box, it comes actually lying on its side. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is put it vertically. Now, one thing to note in the US, the YS640S with the competition cart comes already installed and set up. Here in Canada, it's a little bit different where you have the cooker and the competition cart coming separately and the competition cart actually needs to be fully installed and fully set up. Now I had a little problem where it wasn't sitting on properly. I couldn't figure out how to get it to sit on the competition cart comfortably, but with a little help from Yoder Smoker and the Roker Smoker Brokers here in Canada, was able to get it onto the uh, competition cart, get everything aligned well, and then the screws fit in, there was no problem. Now we add in the smokestack and all of its parts, starting with the stainless steel cooking grates. Now what I love about the stainless steel cooking grates is that they come in four separate parts. So it allows you to take two out and swap them for the direct grilling grates. Now these things are a thing of beauty. On one side, perfect for grilling and getting those sear marks. And then the other side is flat, so you can do smash burgers on these, you can do uh, steaks and, and hot dogs and veggies, everything. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a close up before adding in the last grate. Here you have your smoke box with a ceramic igniter. You got your auger over there that connects to your pellet hopper. All the pellets go in here. The auger system feeds it slowly. Now when you guys, if you order yours, your plug will come inside of the hopper. Uh, so just take note of that. Be careful, there's an antenna that basically connects your internet. And here, there it is, is your internal thermometer or your, your, in, your chamber thermometer that basically tells you um, the temperature inside the cooker. After every cook, just wipe that down to make sure that it doesn't become black. Otherwise, it'll start reading a little hotter than it should be. Now, like I mentioned, I got the grill grates. They made this a beauty to use, and it's really simple to use. All you do is remove the grates, um, you get the hood off of the diffuser plate, and then you basically put the grates back on, crank up the temperature to 400, 500, 600, whatever it is, and you start cooking. Now, there's one thing that may throw you off when you get your unit. Now, in the manual, it says when you're doing a direct cook to remove the entire diffuser plate. Now, I couldn't find any videos on YouTube explaining that. I couldn't really understand because even on Yoder's website, they didn't really mention that. So I give them a call and their customer service kind of helped me clear things up. And this is something you won't hear on other channels. The original diffuser plate was a one big plate unit. Now, when you're doing a high temperature directly against metal for a long period of time, it can warp that metal. But because you have here a hood, it allows all that heat to escape, which prevents it from warping. So you don't have to worry about it warping. You don't have to remove the entire diffuser plate if you don't want to. But here's a good little tip. Yoder explained to me that you can do your grilling directly without the hood. If you're doing a couple steaks, you know, a few burgers or hot dogs or something like that, then you don't have to take the whole thing out. But the second you get into a larger cook that you need a larger surface area for direct grilling, you want to remove the entire diffuser plate. That way there will be direct access to the entire uh, grill grate from the fire. Now it's time for the burning and seasoning. So we're gonna be spraying the entire unit, and I mean the entire unit. Everywhere where there is black paint, you're gonna to wanna to cover with some oil. 
using a high smoke point oil. Simple as that. Now it's completely empty. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with um, some canola oil. Any high heat oil will work just fine. On the inside, we're gonna make a nice thin layer. So you go ahead and spray everything down, except for the igniter and the firebox. You can leave those alone. And then I wipe it down with a microfiber towel just to make everything nice and consistent. And then I actually go around the entire unit and wipe the whole thing down with some oil. Now, what's the point of seasoning it? Now, other brands like Traeger, they're gonna use a powder coating. That protects the unit against rust, but after a while, the second that that paint gets chipped, it's finished. Either you have to have some specialist come and repair it because the rust is gonna eat right through and it's time to get a new one. Yoder knew this and they went in a different direction. They said, okay, we prefer that our units last forever or a very, very long time. And with a little bit of elbow grease and you know basic maintenance, you'll be able to make it look like new, no matter how much it rusts. What will end up happening is over time, certain rust spots will appear. You sand them down, you give it a nice little spray, and I'll go into that in a future video. So make sure to subscribe. And Yoder actually includes some touch-up paint. So you'll end up having this unit looking like new forever. So seasoning helps prevent or delay the rust. So after you sprayed your entire unit, you spray your stack, you even spray your grates, your grill, everything. Your diffuser, top, bottom, side, the whole thing needs to be covered with oil. Now you add in your pellets. Keep in mind when I'm filming this and when I received the unit, it was about winter time. So it's not your high season of grilling. Not every store has the best pellet selection. I just got some Pit Boss uh, competition blend. I find that it has a nice smell. It doesn't burn as consistently, but it'll do the job. I downloaded the Fireboard app, connected it to the YS640S, set up the Wi-Fi, set up the Bluetooth, and I set it to 375. And you can watch the pit come up to temperature in the app, which is really, really incredible. Now, one nice thing that they did is the fact that you can control the temperature, you can analyze cooks. That's a new beta feature that, that, I, that I noticed on the app. And I'm gonna go into all of these cool little features in future videos, but it's really nice cool little features to have for monitoring and playing with your cooks. First things first, plug it in, then power, beautiful panel, this is for the probes but we don't need those now, and we literally just hit start. Now I'm going to up the temperature to 375 um, in the app. Um, also, you want to make sure to open up the hood for the starting. And we're going to take a little bit of pellets, a handful, and just toss them in. There we go. Now, after 30 seconds or so, we're going to start seeing some flame light up. I think it's after a minute, actually. Fire. So you set it to 375, you leave it for 45 minutes to an hour for the burn-in process. The burn-in process basically is going to burn off any excess oils or residues or residuals that were left from the manufacturing process. The seasoning part, however, you're going to want to let it continue for a couple more hours until all the oil is baked on. Now here was my little issue. I started this whole process a bit too late in the evening, so the seasoning didn't have a time to finish. I had to turn it down bring it in and continue in the morning. Now, when you are done, all you gotta do is hit that power button. It's gonna take about 18 minutes to do the cool down process. Make sure not to unplug your unit until that screen goes completely dark. Now, it's either gonna take 18 minutes or until the temperature probe reads 125 degrees Fahrenheit inside the cooker. Once it's done, you get a nice new microfiber towel, you give it a nice wipe down, any pooling areas, wipe down your grates, wipe down your grills, any excess residue or whatever it is, you can wash them too and let everything cool down completely. After I finished seasoning, I added on the grease shield. The grease shield is a really cool accessory. I really recommend it. Basically, as you're cooking, you'll be surprised how many juices drip down the front of this cooker. And the juices, oils, acids, um, you know, barbecue sauces or rubs or marinades or you know, anything will basically eat away at the paint, causing it to rust faster. The grease shield collects or captures all the grease, has a nice little port at the end where you can wash everything through and it'll help protect the front of the uh, cooker for much longer. Now we have everything ready. It's ready to smoke, it's ready to grill, it's ready to bake, it's ready to 
I don't know, whatever else. I'm gonna be testing all the different ways to cook things on the Yoder smoker. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'm actually gonna be sharing a lot of shorter videos, little clips as shorts on this channel and on our Instagram, which you can check out the link in the description section. And I'm gonna save my review for the first cook. And a little hint, it's gonna be burgers. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, inquiries, or whatever it is, let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Give this video a big thumbs up, ring the bell if you haven't already, and if you have a friend who's thinking about getting a pellet grill, send them this video. Now, for those of you who don't have a pellet grill, or don't want a pellet grill or anything fancy, and you just have a normal Weber kettle, check this playlist out. I've compiled a bunch of my recipes that I've used on my Weber kettle, from briskets, to ribs, to fish, to smoked salmon, really everything. Check it out, I think you guys would love that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you.